God who gives us our abilities. It's God who gives us our talents. And he says to us, I believe, please, 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 don't go bury it. Do something with it. Invest it. And so as we continue to look at it, consider the stewardship of our talent, we need to come to terms with the fact that God expects us to use them, no matter what they are. And even if we only have one talent or one gift or one ability, we need to be careful we don't fall into that trap of saying, well, that's just too insignificant. What does it matter? If we're not careful, the vast majority of us can be more like that one-talent man, tucking it away and saving it. And saving it. It's been said that the peculiar dangers beset the one-talent person. They're tempted to say, with my meager talent, nothing will be expected of me. What can I do? And it goes back to that expectation of, God, you've given so many more talents and abilities to so many more other people. Why don't you use them? They're the ones that need to be doing something. But maybe it's our one talent that we think is so insignificant is exactly what is needed. There's a story that tells of how Satan once brought together his leading evil executives to map out a strategy against the church of Jesus Christ. Satan stood at the blackboard charting out a game plan, describing the demonic warfare in which they would be involved. At the close of the session, Satan said, Now get out there and give it your best effort to keep believers from winning the lost, to keep believers from utilizing what God has given to them as gifts and talents and abilities, the resources that He's blessed them with. And as the hellish hierarchy headed for the door, Satan yelled after them, By the way, by the way, be careful. If those Christians ever begin to really believe and act on what they have in the Word of God and begin to use the gifts that God has given to them, then hell help us because all heaven is going to break loose. All heaven's going to break loose. You see, I believe too often we wonder why we don't see God's hand working in a stronger and bigger way. When God says, I'm giving you everything you need, do something with this. Now, I believe we need to be careful that we don't move to that place where we think we have everything we need and we don't need God, because we always need God. And God is always part of that equation. And I believe prayer plays an integral part because it's in prayer we seek God's face, we seek His will, we ask His direction. And we seek the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to utilize what God has given to us. Because whenever we try to do it on our own, we're going to fall flat on our face. But God calls us to do something with what He's given us. You see, friends, Satan would like nothing more than for us to believe that we cannot do anything, that we are powerless. And if we will allow him, he will cause fear to overtake us every time, causing us to feel inferior and of no use to anyone. Who do you think you are? You really think you've got abilities? You've got to be joking. If you even try that, you're going to fall flat on your face. The man of the parable was given the one talent, allowed fear to overtake him. And instead of doing something with what he had been given, he buried it. And he chose to do nothing with it. How often do we do the same with what God has given to us? And we miss some very real 
opportunities of blessing, not only for us, but maybe even for others. And we miss some very real opportunities to be in ministry. Someone once wrote, the one talent person is one note on the piano. But his or her failure can wreak, wreak havoc as one sour note or one silent note can play havoc on a keyboard. The one talent person can speak, they can vote, they can work, they can pray, the list goes on. In reality, he or she is many talented and is the ongoing of God's kingdom. It's the ongoing of God's kingdom that depends on him or her. The final issue here is what will we do with our talent? What will we do with our abilities? What will we do with the gifts that God has given to us? Someone once said there are actually three kinds of people. One, there are those who make things happen. There are those who make things happen. Second, there are those who watch things happen. Those who watch things happen. And third is those who wonder what happened. Those who wonder what happened. A question we need to wrestle with and come to terms with is which one of those categories will we fall into. I hope this is going to work. If not, it's okay. But I've got a real short video clip that I believe sums up what we've been in the gap. And I want us just to take a moment to watch this.
in his son Jesus Christ. And we celebrate the fact that God in Christ was reconciling the world unto himself. We're not just calling on us to sit then and celebrate that. We need to do that. But he's calling us to do something. To not only celebrate that salvation, but to hear it as a call to share it and to live it out and to utilize the gifts, the talents, the abilities that he's given to us that we might move out in his world. And so as we come to the Lord's table this day, I pray that it is a celebration of God's grace and mercy anew, of his forgiveness, of new life that he promises. But I pray that likewise, in the midst of that coming to his table, it becomes us hearing anew his call to do something with what he has gifted us with utilize it to further his kingdom here on earth and to reach his people in the name of his son Jesus. We pray.